Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin Pierre, and on today's episode we're doing another Whiskey In, Whiskey Out, and this time it's for the month of January 2023. You guys know the format by now, I'm going to be doing the whiskies I got in this month versus the whiskies I got out this month, so you're going to see a bit of a preview about whiskies that are coming, and then a bit of a kind of a recycled review, let's say, of the bottles that I've killed this month. Now, as always, we've got roughly, well, we've got three in and uh, four out, although I will get straight into the whiskey in because the first one isn't a whiskey, but you'll see why I want to cover it. Let's get straight into it then and see what we've got. So first one then, as I said, not a whiskey. This is a sake and uh, my good friend Mac at Campi Planet, which hopefully you all know and love. And if you haven't caught on to Mac at Campi Planet, make sure you go and check out his channel. I'll put links in the description below. He's making amazing quality videos on everything Japanese drinks. Now that covers a lot of whiskey, of course, but they're onto other things as well, like this sake. But he did an amazing series, which in my opinion has been underloved uh, by, by the, the kind of internet world, YouTube and whatnot, where he did a, a documentary series about a visit that he made to a brewery in Sado, Sado, and they he made his own sake, and this is it. He bought this over from me from Japan when I met him in uh, early January this year. So massive thanks to him for this. Um, I'm, I've been waiting to open this. I haven't tried this yet, I don't know what it's like, but I'm starting my sake journey with this, and this is gonna go in the fridge by uh, his recommendation after this, because once you've, once you've opened bottles like this, you have to kind of kill them as quickly as possible. It's not the same as whiskey. You know, um, watch his video, because you can learn a lot about sake in that kind of process, but there'll be links in the description below to his channel and to the playlist for this and I implore you to spend a good hour or so watching all of his videos on that because they were really, really good. That'll sit there, down here. Um, talking of amazing people, one of the other bottles I've got in this, this month is this. This is the McCarthy's Oregon Single Malt pot stilled whiskey. Now one of my patrons, a, uh, a really amazing guy called Bud, who always comments on my uh, Patreon video, um, like releases when I do them early. I do a kind of early release usually every week for my my patrons, so you know, make sure you go check that out if that's something you're interested in. But um, he's always on it with the comments on that, and I absolutely love that. He's always got a kind of amazing uh, kind of different view on, on the whiskies because he's so far away from me he gets an entirely different scope on whiskey and often the whiskies I'm covering he can't get but anyway he got in touch to say I'd really like to send you a bottle and I said sure why not trusted and I, he sent me this now this is a really interesting one because it's um, it's a three-year-old whiskey distilled in Oregon but it's made with peat malted Scottish barley but something I thought was really interesting is that like so he he bought this from an English website and sent it to me, but it had been imported from these guys to France, originally, that you can see here, then to me, uh, sorry, then to the UK and then to me. So that's it's, it's barley peated in Scotland, sent to America, and then this bottle has come back to France and then back to the UK to me. And I think that's really fascinating, but... Um, I've, I've, I've opened it, but I'm not going to reserve my kind of judgment on this until a bit later because I do like peated whiskey. Um, it's expensive over here. It's expensive. I don't know. I don't know what Bud would pay for this, um, but this is apparently a, a distillery that's quite local to him. So a massive, massive thank you to him um, and just all my patrons in general because you're all legends and you'll keep this channel going. You really do. Last but not least, then um, I did buy something this month, and that was the Bimba Club. Release number three, it's a really big bottle. Does, does it fit in frame? Just about, if I bring it back a little bit. The, often the problem with Bimbers is they don't fit on uh, on some shelves. My Calax in the other room, it doesn't fit on that, but it does fit on one of the shelves on my on my Billy bookcase, well I would Anyway, uh, in January, on the same time I went to go and meet Mac, we went to the Bimber distillery, and uh, Matt and the guys at Bimba were great for were really great at showing us round their distillery. I've been there once once before, second time. Amazing to see how that they've expanded and grown over the time. Um, I'm actually a club member myself, but I missed the release of this because it, it's just hard to get hold of Bimba. But we tried it as part of the flight they put on for us, and there was a group of four of us, three whiskey tubers and a good friend of mine, and we 
we just tried some of the bottles and we were like, uh, should I try some of the drams? And we, they were all good. You know, I've often said this, Bimba are, are, make really great liquid. When we tried this, all of us were utterly astounded and every single one of us walked away with a bottle of this. Every single one. Including Mac, who had to somehow get all these bottles. I mean, he took two bottles of mine home with him. He's got to get all these back in uh, in, in his suitcase to Japan. He obviously managed it because he's back there now, but um, hopefully he got through customs with it all. But yeah, I'm going to be covering this pretty soon, maybe. Uh, kind of irrelevant because you can only pick it up at the distillery itself or if you're a club member. I think it's even sold out online if you're a club member. Whatever. That's another video for another day. But um, absolute quality. Absolute quality whiskey. And I think it ended up costing me about 70 which is not... Not too bad, not too bad. That's it for the kind of whiskey in plus one not whiskey, but hopefully that's been enjoyable for you. Let's get onto the whiskey out and we'll talk a little bit about the four bottles that were killed this month. And again, in no particular order, first one then is the Tullabarden 228 and this is the uh, the burgundy cask finish. As I said a lot with these these releases, they kind of come in a, a, a four set of like the, the Sovereign series or the, whatever they're called their series. And they had a kind of each one has its own unique inflection on on flavor profile with their cask finish but they're all they all cost about the same so there was really the only difference in flavor profile but i found myself flicking between which one i thought was my favorite and it, it must have been entirely based on my you know just where i was at in that day you know it could be what i'd eaten what mood i was in who i was with etc but um this one was occasionally my favorite um, and that's now flicked on to the, the sherry one, which I've got on the shelf here, just out of shot, is it? Maybe just there, um, which I'm really enjoying so much so. And this is a weird thing to say, but when I really enjoy a whiskey, I try not to drink it that much. I try to put it on the shelf and let it kind of like be there so that it's not gone so quickly. But this one went pretty quick and I enjoyed it. I'm happy with that. Moving on then, we've got the Glasgow 1770, and this is the... Uh, Summerton whiskey exclusive for Christmas 2021 I want to say um, it actually doesn't say that on here because they did uh, they did this one for the Christmas that year um, 2020 I want to say actually and then they did another one for Christmas 2021 um, which was then called a 2021 because obviously to differentiate it um, I really liked this at the start and this you know this is a apple pie shortbread and pepper spice bang on bit of cinnamon as well when the other one came out it overshadowed this to be honest in my opinion the other one the 2021 was astounding it was so good um, and i don't know why but this in a bit of a rotation sometimes you'll probably notice if you watch my videos for any length of time the the set here rotates a lot and that is not because of the videos it's genuinely because this is this is my whiskey collection there's there's no other bottles in any other part of the house anymore uh, i've managed to reduce it to the point where i've got them here so when i fancy a dram i dig around um, i don't put them back in the same place there's no uh, rhyme or reason to this there's no regions there's no nothing like that i just move them around and then i put them back in whatever order they came in so you often see a good flux up here anyway the reason why i'm telling you that is because this ended up at the front at one point when I put all my whiskies back and it got to about here. I have a bit of a rule where if it's below the label, I tend to move it forwards and get it killed. Um, this one's a bit different to most bottles because the label's quite high, whereas as you can see on the whiskey I covered this week, the, the, the label's quite low. So um, yeah, the rule changes per bottle. Long story long, I killed it. Um, and I enjoyed every minute of that and I don't think we'll get another flavour profile like it it was very unlike any other Glasgow 1770 I'd tried before um, unfortunately you won't be able to get it because it was an exclusive but keep an eye on Glasgow 1770 because they're doing really good stuff moving on we've got the uh, the Big Pete cask strength uh, this was for a Christmas um, not last year 2022 so this was the 2021 um, got sent this by the, by the uh, by the guys at Douglas Lang, and I've always enjoyed Big Pete, and Big Pete is even better when it's cask strength. Or is it cask strength? Yeah, natural natural uh, natural cask strength. Yeah, so fifty two point eight percent. So not like overly high, but yeah, Big Pete and cask strength incredible uh, and they do these a lot i think they do them every christmas and they do some other special editions as well well worth checking out um 
even the standard Big P, if you've not dabbled in Douglas Lang at all yet, their standard range, their remar remarkable regional malts range is just quality. I think they're all like 35 quid a bottle as well. Haven't seen much of them recently, but they're about there. Finally then, we've got the Talisker Sky. Um, this one gets a little bit of a bad rap on my Discord channel. Uh, if you've not been on Discord, again, I should put a link below. Hopefully I'll put a link below. Um, join join the community because we have a lot of chat and we love talking about whiskey and all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, this one's the kind of entry level for Talisker. Um, quite cheap. Um, for me, I think it gets uh, a bit of a bad rap and I think it's undeserved. I do like this. Um, it's cheap enough. And even if it, you don't think it's cheap enough, the fact that it's like a Diageo entry level malt for 45.8%, you know, take it and run. Take it and run because... I think if they could get away with putting it at 40% they would. Cynical me, cynical hat on. Um, every other range that they've got is, uh, they've got a 40% at the start. And Talisker they don't. I don't know why, I think there's a reason for it. I think they've always had this 45.8%. Um, long may it continue, long, long may it continue. It's not the best Talisker, not by a long shot. The 10 is way better. And there are gonna be people out there that have uh, the Talisker 10 year old available to them for around about the same price or only just a little bit more and my caveat to that is as I said in the video to this you know I can get this on Amazon next day delivery for like 22 quid whereas the 10 is probably another tenner on that and that you just can't beat that sort of price you know like yes again the 10 is better and if you're in a position where you want to spend that 10 pound more to get a slightly better quality liquid then fill your boots. You know, there's, the fact that this exists doesn't impact on your day to day at all. But for the people that want to make a bit of a saving, have a good impact dram. There it is. There's my piece. Another whiskey in, whiskey out done for this month. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Uh, you guys like these videos. I know straight off the back of my collection video. If you haven't checked that one out yet, please do because I I love making videos like this because I get to just talk a little bit about whiskey as if you're here in the room with me instead of me just looking at camera vibes but um yeah that's another whiskey and whiskey out i've really enjoyed this month um who knows what next month is going to bring budgets are low i'm struggling to get kind of new whiskies in but i'll do my best there's always whiskey deals going on so i've got some good things coming up no matter what but thanks again for watching thanks again to all my patrons especially bud what a legend and i'll see you again next month for another whiskey and whiskey out don't forget to check out the whiskey reviews in between. See you soon.